Hi, welcome to Linda's Creative Coiling. Today I'm doing part two of a video that shows how to insert beads into your pine needle basket. You can see from my basket here that I've already inserted three sets of beads. And where I left off in my last video was right here where I needed to add on some thread on part of a wrapped row. So that's where I'm gonna start, it's right there. Um, I've got my waxed linen thread, it's four ply. I'm gonna pull off a couple yards. Depending on what I'm doing, I might use a longer thread, but this time two yards will be sufficient. I've got my beeswax. I'm gonna over wax this thread a little bit. That makes it shiny and makes the color a little more intense. So I'm going to over wax my thread. Now I can go ahead, in this instance, since I'm wrapping, I can go ahead and thread my darning needle. I use a John James number one darning needle. And I'm going to needle the thread. I've got it held tight between my thumb and index finger. I'm going to put the eye of the needle right down over the thread. Makes it easy. <clears throat> I like to add my threads not right at the bead. It makes it a little smoother transition. So I'm gonna wrap a couple more wraps here. Since my thread's so short, I'm doing it under this way. I'm gonna wrap out a few little bit. Then I'm gonna hold, I need to add a pine needle. Insert it deep into the center of my coil so that the pine needle heads don't show. Twist my gauge. What I do is, this is pretty easy. I just hold that on top of the coil with my thumb. I add the new thread. I hold it on top of the coil with my thumb. And then I just start wrapping. Get it twisted. I'm going to wrap a few times. Oh, that's clunking. Wrap a few times. Now I'm going to use my gauge. I'm going to squish those together real tight. Now I can trim those ends, trim the ends off those threads so that I don't, it's not so bulky. I'm going to trim those off. Now what I need to do is wrap out, you can see on all these wraps I've, I'm doing three stitches. I've got three stitches at the beginning and end of each section of beads. <clears throat> so here I need to go out three stitches, so I'm going to go out to right here. So I need to wrap a little bit more. The way I'm going to do this is hold this in my left hand and wrap. You can wrap quite a few times. Sometimes I count 16. I count out to 16. I don't know how I came up with that number, but I count out to 16. It's one of those odd little things. And I wasn't counting that time, so I don't know how many I have. And I squish it all tight together. I'm gonna add another pine needle. way down deep in there. The worst thing is to come around on another row and be able to see a pine needle head showing. So I'm always careful to hide them. You can see I'm getting, I'm catching on that thread. What I'm gonna do is use my <clears throat> piece of denim. I'm gonna use my piece of denim and I'm gonna scrub that off. Scrub off that pine needle. It's not scrubbing very well. Scrub that off so it won't catch. And you can use this and scrub your basket anytime you're kind of getting poked. And especially at the end of your basket, if you'll scrub it all down, then it'll make a smooth finish. condense that. Now I want to hold it down here and measure. You can see I've still got a little way to go, so I'll keep wrapping. I might 
should have made a longer thread. Okay. Okay, that's probably good. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is connect this right here. And I wanna connect it just under the thread. So I'm from the back to the front, I'm gonna go in on the left side of that thread, come out on the right side. I'm gonna pull it tight. Now, I need to get out to, I'm spacing my beads three apart. So my middle bead will be here, my first bead will be here. So I need to stitch out to right here. So I'm going to take about four stitches. These stitches, I'm going to go into the pine needles. Left on the back, come out on the right in the front. Now I can pull this really tight. Pull that really tight so that that pulls that coil right down there. I'm going to take another one. And I should have added a little extra thread, so I'm going to add another thread before I get out there. So for this, I'm going to add, do, use the hidden thread method. The way to do that is I'm going to use a second darning needle. I'm going to just leave this one dangling. I'm going to get another piece of thread. Get another piece of thread. I'll over wax it. Yeah, spill my beads. Over wax that. Now I can thread my second darning needle. Same way. Needle the thread, hold it tight, put the eye of the needle down over the thread. And needle the thread. For this hidden thread method, I'm going to tie a knot in the end of my thread, tie another knot, make sure those stack up on each other. I'm going to trim this little end down to about a sixteenth of an inch. Trim that down. Now with my new thread, I'm going to pick a spot on the back, somewhere down a row or two, wherever I can get in. And I'm just so I'm crossing some threads. And I'm going to come up here on the front. In exactly the same spot where my old thread is. You can see I've got two threads there now. I'm going to pull that up. Now I'm going to pull my knot on the back. I'm going to pull that up so it disappears up into the coil. Uh, and pulled it out. Try that again. That happens sometimes. Go up there. And I'll pull maybe not so hard. Pull that up in there. Okay. Now I can start stitching with my new thread and you can see I'm I need to get to right here so I need to do just one more stitch one more stitch usually I take about three stitches before I tie off my old thread, but in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and do it because it would kind of be in my way when I do this next section of wrapping. So what I'm gonna to do to tie off my old thread, where's my old thread? Here's my old thread. 
Again, I want to make sure that I'm crossing threads. I want to pull that really tight so that this stitch is tight. I'm going to go across this thread and come out on the back somewhere far away, somewhere where I'm crossing some threads. And I can pull that through. I can pull it really taut, pull it really tight. How can I show you that? Pull it really tight and snip it off. All right, old thread's gone. Now, what I want to do on this section, and I would not do this on a normal basket, but for this demonstration purpose, I want to do an open wrap instead of my wrapped uh, top to my beads. I want to do an open wrap, which you can do. It's a little more tricky, but what I have here, here is my tool. It's just a, a, a wooden clothespin. Because what I'm going to do is just do a dummy wrap, and I have to get out to this stitch where my I want my bead to be. So I'm going to do a lock stitch. A lock stitch is just I go in on that side of the thread. I come out on that side of the thread. And then I do it again. I go in back here. I come out back over here where I was supposed to be. Come back out there. And that kind of locks it down. Okay, now I start wrapping and it's just an open wrap. So I just wrap and pull it very tight and hold it very tight. And I am gonna do about three because I was doing threes, right? So I do about three. Now I have to keep the tension on that so that it doesn't get loose because you don't want this to be loose. So I'm gonna keep the tension on that What I'm going to do so that I can let go is use my clip. I'm going to clip that in place. Then I can get my bead. I can put my bead on my thread. Now I need to go in using this stitch. So just like the other, I go down from the top, in on the left, and I go clear down to the bottom of that row, down to the bottom of that coil. And set that in there. Now you can see my threads here are still pretty tight. That's good. Okay. I go across that thread, so I go in on the left and come up and through the bead. I bring my needle all the way through the bead. This is the trick. This is where you want to keep a loop. You want to find the one that's tight and pull down on that one and pull and pull and pull and then snap. The snap gets it, Se seats it tight. Then I swing it around to the front. Pull it really tight. Okay, I can do the next one. So this time I only want two wraps. Okay, so I'm gonna do wrap. And wrap and that emulates the same thing as if I was st stitching so my number of stitches match. I'm gonna hold that really tight. Find my needle. <gasps> Get my bead. <laughs> it almost got away. Get my bead. Get my bead. There, I got my bead. 
on it. Okay, so from the back, I go down from the left to the right, all the way through that coil. I could clip that now. That might make it easier. Pull that through. Okay, now. So you can see this is a little more difficult than when you're using a wrap row because you have to pull those threads, keep those wrap threads, dummy wraps tight. But you can do it. Okay, I go across the thread, so I go in on the left, come up all the way through the bead. Come up through there. Now you can see it right now, it's kind of loose. So what I want to do is pull, pull that really tight, that tight one. Pull that down and hold it. Then snap. Okay, come around to the front. Last bead. Have to keep adding pine needles just about every section, every stitch. All right, so two more wraps. One, two, two more wraps. Now I'm going to go down through the, down on the left, and there I let go, and you can see how loose that got. That's not good. So I have to pull that tight. Pull that tight. I'm going to use my clip. Okay, so I pull my needle through. Ah, I didn't put my bead on. Oh no. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> okay. All right. Needle the thread. You didn't know this was a comedy video, did you? Okay. Get my bead. This is my last bead. Get my bead, put it on. Now I can hold that. Now I can go down on my stitch, go down to the bottom. Pull that really tight. Pull that tight. You can see how these are kind of wonky, but you can go back and straighten those and make them look better. Okay, go in on the left. Come up through the coil and through the bead. Come up to where I can pull that tight. Pull it tight, pull it tight, pull it tight, then snap. Add some more pine needles. Okay, come back around to the front because if you leave it on the back, it will not be at the right angle and it'll flop over. So you always remember to come back around to the front. Okay, now I have to wrap three more times to get my even stitches. So there's one, two, three, three. Now I'm gonna stitch in here. So I'm gonna hold that with my clip. Okay, I'm gonna go in under the thread, just under the thread, just under the thread. Gonna make sure those are tight. Make sure those dummy stitches are tight. Pull that down. Oh, that wasn't long enough. I need one more wrap. I think I can just do that. I can just wrap one more time without taking that out. Okay, that ought to make it better. Okay, now I'm going to pull it. Yes, that's much better. See how that's at a better angle? And I need to scrub that off a little bit because those ends or there and breaking. Scrub that off a little. Okay, now I can keep stitching. 
Now I can go into the pine needles, in on the left and out on the right. Pull that really tight. I need to adjust those, adjust those, adjust those so that they're even. Okay, I can take my next stitch in on the left, out on the right. I'm still using my angle because I still want my sides to be angled. Some of this where it's rough, where their ends will be hidden on my next row. That's a nice thing because you go back around and kind of cover that spot. These aren't perfect. They're not manufactured. They're handmade, so you know you have to expect some imperfections. At least I do. I think that's what makes it unique, makes it handmade. Okay, I'm gonna keep stitching. Right now I'm back. This is where I started, and I'm back there. So I can stop right there because that's where I'll start my next section. Whatever I'm gonna do for my next section, that's where I should start. So here are two methods of how to insert beads. The open coil, the wrapped row. If you want to see how to do the wrapped row section, you can watch the first part of this video. This is part two. And I hope that was helpful and that you'll come back and see me again sometime. So thanks for joining me today. I'm Linda.